and you'll be able to, I've tried this also trying to do it with a, uh, like a piston compression ring. I'm having a little bit of problems with size, trying to get a piston compression ring to fit in there exactly right. But uh, it, it, I think it's possible. I think you can do it. There's been some new changes in the hard drive that I just kind of want to point out before I finish up this part. Around the platters, some new hard drives have a ring, like a metal L-shaped piece that has been showing up in between the platters. Like basically they put up, when they manufactured it, they put a platter on the drive, then they took an L-shaped piece, put it on there, screwed it on, then put the next platter on. I'm still not exactly sure why those things are there. The best I can tell is either got to be uh, vibration or air pressure or to actually stop someone from doing a data recovery because it's basically in my way. Uh, I don't know how you can pull out this top platter, unscrew the thing, and then line it up and hope you get the next platter because you can't, you're going to turn them. Uh, even a minute amount will cause you a problem. But if you see this uh, little ring, uh, my, my best guess right now is to hope that you can actually break the spindle out of the middle. The, some of the motors on these, like for instance a Seagate, some people's drives when they've been falling over, the, the cap stand where all the platters are mounted on is actually popping off of the motor. And so it's in there just basically floating around. And if you're lucky enough that that's happened and it's complete, you can physically unscrew those screws and pull the whole thing out. So I don't know what to tell you yet. If you're running into that, I'm still kind of playing with it, but it hasn't made it to animations yet. Uh, so basically what I've got here is one that I've reassembled. I've put the heads together with the paper, and then I've moved the entire assembly. I have been able to realign and get up to four platters working again correctly. Uh, your problem here is that in some cases, the closer it gets to the center of the spindle itself, the more likely it is not to be perfectly aligned, that you actually have a little bit more of a problem. It's not 100% perfect, but it seems to work. I've been able to get pretty good recoveries. I've been able to get most, you know, 95, 96% of the drive before I physically am having problems with the heads getting too far in. This particular tool that I'm using, uh, it was like 400 bucks plus like 200 bucks shipping from China or something. Uh, I have not found anybody in the U.S. selling them and only a few manufacturers outside of China or something. Uh, so it's called an HPE, a, a head and platter exchanger. So you can try to find one. Uh, Basically, that is pretty much the end. <clears throat> Anybody got any questions? You got like one minute. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, which manufacturers are using glue for the amplifier? Which manufacturers are using glue for the amplifier? Which manufacturers are using glue for the amplifier? I think it was Western Digital, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's, I, you see a variety of things that change quite quickly. So every three months, whatever drive you were looking at pretty much changed again. So there's no easy way to know. And like I said, you don't know all the time, too, uh, if your problem was the preamp in the first place. So you're kind of just dealing with the whole head assembly. Yes, sir? Uh, it's a 1200A, Adaptec 1200A. It was actually a RAID controller, but it read single IDE drives and everything right off the bat. So, 1200A. Anybody else? I'm sorry? Is the block next to the system area? What? Oh, yes. Yeah, you're in negative cylinders when you're in the SA area. So zero is actually right outside the system area. Uh, it actually is still track zero there. And then you move into negative cylinders. And that's, that's typically what they're called now, negative cylinders. And you actually read them. When you read UBA blocks, you're actually reading them in negative. It actually is negative one, negative two, negative 20, so on and so on. Yes. No, on flash, that's not true. On flash, uh, if it knows that it's a wipe cycle, if it knows that it's a, there, it actually is doing something different. It's simulating uh, like a virtual thing. And if it's like repetitive numbers, it's, it, is, it does know the difference in some cases. I'm not sure how I can prove that yet, but I have seen uh, wipes actually cause a garbage collection, which we can actually see like in JFFS, which is an open source version of, of 